So just to touch briefly on walking mitigation and what we're talking about here, um, pipelines walk when they expand either thermally or through pressure. And the, the key issue is that they move away from the subsea infrastructure that they're attached to um, and at some point can lead to failure. The traditional methods of mitigating that uh, include a, a pipe and clamp system which has been used um, most recently on GWF1. That poses a number of challenges both in terms of the size of the piles and also in terms of that clamp, the clamping loads into the pipe and the implications that has for the coatings. Other methods that are commonly used include rock dumping and stacked concrete mattresses. The key issues we see with that is approximately a fifth of the weight that you transport offshore actually goes to doing the job that you're employing it to do. And the rest of the weight goes either into the seabed in making that structure self-stable, so in terms of making the mattresses stable, or in the case of rock dumping, just building the burn profile. So. We were challenged to come up with something much more efficient than that. Uh, they're also susceptible to unzipping, so uh, if the pipeline buries beneath the mattresses or beneath the rock burn, you lose that friction interface and that weight bearing uh, capability and, and you've lost your restraint. So the solution we came up with in collaboration with Shell uh, back in 2015 was uh, called the pipe clamping mattress or PCM. PCM w was a, an elegant solution. And it was elegant because we were able to transfer 100% of the weight into the pipeline. So that clamping action means that the friction interface between the, the mattress and the pipe uh, exceeds one and all of the weight that you've deployed to contribute to actual restraint actually goes into actual restraint. And approximately 70% less weight is required uh, compared with those methods that are put up earlier. The way it works is the pipe clamping mattress uh, clamps onto the pipeline, it has a rubber interface. And then the second element, the log mattress, locks that on and it's quite a large angle that we deploy there. Uh, and that locking action takes a huge amount of force to, to uh, unlatch the PCM. In fact, we've been unable to, to do it during our function testing. You can see a full-scale model of it there in the top right-hand corner. I'll just touch on a, a couple of case studies. Firstly, for Melampire, the walking was about 28 mil per cycle, and you can make out in the left-hand corner some scuff marks of the structure moving on its base. And it, it had actually walked 1.8 metres from its design location. Melampire is a very, very important pipeline, both for Shell and for the Philippines. And you can see the solution that we ended up deploying there was banks of PCM, so it was in about 850 metres of water and quite, quite soft soil. Uh, Shell actually owns the patent for the technology, so we developed that under contract to them and we have the global distribution rights. And that really just reflects the, the collaboration that we had with them. There was a couple of key challenges they had. Firstly, it had to be delivered remotely. Secondly, they had a, a very small uh, IRM vessel to deliver it with. And this solution enabled them to do it in one vessel trip with a small crane. One of the key parts of the design is that the tolerance of that clamping mechanism needs to be very tight. We actually build it to plus or minus one mil, and it means that we don't point load that coating interface. It's also lined with a rubber, um, which helps take out any local deformations in the, in the coating. The other key part of the story is the pipeline to soil interface friction coefficient. In this case was 0.5, uh, testing that we'd actually done through AGs showed that it, with some cycling it actually achieves about 0.8 but we ran 0.5 through the calculations to come up with something with some inherent conservativeness. And that test photo you can see there is a, a pipe joint placed on the seabed at the exact location just investigating what the initial soil interface friction coefficient is. That's about a two degree seabed slope there and the pipe joint is sliding. We, we estimated the interface friction coefficient somewhere south of 0.02 percent it was basically zero it's a really nice real world example of how soil consolidates um, both with time and cycling the other thing we think is really cool about pcms is you can target the weight to your zero anchor point which means you can use a lot less weight again than if you were placing piles at the end of a pipeline uh, to give you an example here, uh, our, our restraint load was 60 tonnes. We actually needed somewhere around 40 to, to achieve the restraint at this location, that's the actual load. And if we'd placed an anchor at the end of the pipeline, it was somewhere around 400 tonnes. So 
So that restraint load was uh, significantly reduced by our ability to choose that zero anchor point. So our next application for this uh, was Greater Plutonio. Uh, it's in 1300 metres of water. The pipe diameter is uh, just over half a metre. We've delivered 18 sets of PCMs with a submerged weight around 330 tonnes. So a much, much uh, larger restraint load required here. Uh, again, they've got a similar situation where uh, an infill flow line's walking away from a wellhead. As part of this program with Phil from uh, UWA, we've been conducting some centrifuge testing. Uh, and we had two aims with that. One was to quantify how that friction coefficient changes over time. And secondly, to investigate the settlement uh, effects on the PCM, just to understand better how um, the friction interface coefficient between the PCM and the soil, and whether that PCM could actually lift off the pipe. I love that machine they've got there. I think, Phil, it does something in excess of 115 RPM, which is ridiculous when you see it. It's an absolute beast of a machine. And, uh, and the test tools that they produced there were exceptional. The really, really clever thing that they did was uh, build a tool that could run multiple tests without actually turning the machine off um, because it takes quite a considerable pipe and you can see the pipe actually embedding into the clay sample. The process started off with a consolidation phase where they actually just happened to have a sample of clay from the specific block in Angola in the shed down at UWA. Uh, they reconstituted that, uh, cycled it to get its um, characteristics to match those of the actual clay and then they ran this trial. I mentioned one of the key outcomes was to, to look at embedment and these two images here show you uh, how the pipe embedded um, in both, um, both with the PCM on it and then with the log mat and after a number of cycles as well. So I think it embedded something like 1.6D towards the end of the test. The important thing was there was no slippage between the PCM and the, and the pipe, so it, it doesn't come off uh, when it does embed. Uh, and there's an interesting effect with the interface friction coefficient between the PCM and the seabed. It's actually uh, significantly less than the pipe. The interesting thing about this is the net friction coefficient still goes up. So even though the friction reduces at the PCM, the overall friction increases for the system, and that's the friction that's important. Uh, this just gives you an idea of how the friction um, performed through the cycles of the test. And you can see how it cycles over time. It starts out at about 0.5 and ends up approaching north of 1 up to 1.5 over time. The thing we really like about this is it's retrofitted onto live pipelines, which is really, really key, particularly for Mellon Pyre. Also very important for BP. This is a FAT we did down in Henderson and we get a lot of value out of these. We've never regretted doing an FAT. We've always learned a lot of lessons that we've been able to implement before we go into the field. In this case, we actually trialled lifting two log mats at the same time and deploying one and then deploying a second one. And uh, it's all driven by achieving some installation efficiencies when we get in field. So we've reduced the number of hook runs the client needs to do and at uh, an hour and a half a hook run at this water depth, it, it makes a big difference to the economics of the job. So to the future, we see a really good opportunity to be able to use these to more precisely define buckle initiation on pipelines. So you can define your 
zero anchor points all the way along your pipeline and use those to ensure that your buckles are going to occur where you'd like them to and at the same time limit walking at each end of the pipeline. This is an example we've done using buckle support mattresses where you want your buckles to occur and then PCMs at the nodes. And finally, where we see this technology being used more and more in the future is actually to reduce Z-spool uh, design and, and connector sizes. So by placing PCMs at the end of your pipeline, you can restrict your pipeline expansion loads that are going into your subsea structure, um, potentially reduce the size of your Z-spools by uh, two thirds, uh, and also importantly, reduce the size of your connectors. Uh, and, and all the fatigue loads that are going into that infrastructure. So we think there's a big prize to be had there and that's where we'll be focusing next in terms of developing and implementing this technology. And that's what I've got for you today. So thanks very much for listening.